Hi guys, tonight we are going to do um, some bread and butter. It's going to be a real quick video because we did our video earlier on the dill pickles, um, which if you watched it, we ended up with 58 quarts of dill pickles. That is a lot of pickles. And uh, so anyway, we have our brine already uh, done. Uh, we have more dill pickles water bathing in the back, so we're not going to go through that step tonight. <clears throat> But on the brine, I use the Mrs. Wages bread and butter. Occasionally, I do make my own brine, and it turns out really good, too. But because we had so many cucumbers to pickle, I'm just tired, and we're running out of time. <laughs> so what I did was um, we had a double batch of brine mix, so we used uh, 14 cups of sugar. I know that sounds like a lot, but that is what you need, 14 cups of sugar. And then we used um, 14 or actually 15 and a half cups of apple cider vinegar. Sweet. So, yes, it's just very sweet. So this is a very sticky mess. And I usually use a um, Pyrex measuring disc to... Oh, and for those that don't know, um, on my channel, this is my husband's stand. He is also a scripture man stand. So... He's going to sit in with us and watch. I know he's sick of pickles because when you walk in our house, that's all it smelled like for two days. So, uh, anyway. Well, I used to be an alcoholic and I was trying to pickle my brain. Yeah. Thank God I, <laughs> I did yes. succeed. Thank, well, no, he didn't. He's sharp as a tack. But anyway, you'll see that we have already uh, jarred up our jars. And we have a mixture of onions and red and yellow bell peppers cut up in there. Mixed in with our organic mini cukes that are sliced in dill chips. And we're going to, we've packed them very full. You can see they are really good and packed. And we're going to start filling with brine. And I usually use a uh, Pyrex, like I said, measuring, measuring glass. But this bread and butter brine is extremely sticky. And when I say sticky, I mean sticky. So... You're going to fill your jars. You're going to bring your brine to a boil. And then you're going to slowly fill your jars up to the bottom ring. Ooh, see, that one's spitting out at me. Them are my favorite, the bread and butters. I had, actually, as many as I've made, I did not think I liked bread and butter. Because I've always ate deal my whole life. And I opened one up a couple days ago. And I tell you what, I can't stop eating them. It's ridiculous. If you can get fat off pickles, I'm going to get even fatter on pickles. But they're very good, actually. So Let's see. We, we ended up with um, nine jars of the bread and butter. That's what we're going to... We've got packed here. And like I said, you want to fill this up to the bottom ring. Because you want one inch headspace. So it won't take very long. We'll get these done. And the good thing about using a ladle is that if it's got all the goodies if it sinks down to the bottom. Whereas when you use a Pyrex and you fill a measuring glass, you fill up several, like two and a half at one time. And then your goodies are sometimes just stuck in the bottom and you've got to split it up. Yeah, when you're doing dill, uh, though, that's, uh, th this right here is not so bad on the smell, I don't believe. Mm -hmm. That dill brine is, whoo, it'll take your breath. I'm like, what's a dill, pickle? <laughs> and then whenever she starts doing bread and butter, I'm like, yep, there's the bread and butter. See, and I think that the bread and butter is stronger, mainly because I'm standing over the pan and if you, if it's really hot when you do it, <clears throat> it can kind of take your breath away. So, and we're going to have extra brine, a lot extra brine. But if you do end up with extra brine, that's something that you can put. Be careful with this one. I will. You don't want me, you don't want to smell like a bread and butter pickle? No, I just don't want to get burnt. <laughs> Yes, and I will say that's another thing. We talked earlier in the other video about having a jar bust. You have to watch. I was using some of my spare jars, um, which were some mayonnaise jars. And I did lose a jar. Tragic. So, 
now. Yeah, because they're hard to come by right now. Yes, they and, are. And the lids. Yeah, it's it was a struggle last canning season, I tell you. People but You can't drinking. blame people for wanting to can and wanting to learn this stuff because, you know, of the times we're in. Yeah, it's a lost art that has come back with a vengeance, I tell you. People are getting woke. And when the That's process of that happening, yes, the process of that happening, they realize that, hey, maybe I should uh, take care of my family a little better and prepare a little better. Which, uh, I grew up with my granny canning all the time, but she mainly did jellies and pickles. But uh, last year I went down and <clears throat> stayed with my mom and for a day and she uh, taught me how to can pinto beans and I tell you what it was on after that because it is an awesome thing. Now this then we is, learn a lot off YouTube as well. I'm oh sure. yeah, I watch, there's several different people that I watch on YouTube and follow and I always research videos and everything. This is your little poker stick. I don't even know what it's officially called. You know you're supposed to shout your mouth, huh? Huh? You're supposed to shout them out. Yes, well, one of the ones I, one of the main ones I watch is uh, Living Homestead, or Living Traditions. I'm sorry, and uh, I'm not real good with names all the time. Uh, and I just started watching a new one. This, I believe, it's called the Stivers Family. Uh, I don't know that one girl. <laughs> I watch the um, Pastures. What's the Oh, you're better with names than I am. The preacher's wife. Oh, the farming farming pa pastures wife. Yes. Yeah. She's awesome. I I watch way she more makes than that. Good but. tasting stuff. Or I can't taste it over the screen, but it sure looks <laughs> good. If only we had smell a vision, right? Yeah. I tell people that all the time. So what I'm doing here is um. Now my brine's hot, so you gotta be careful when you do that. You want to take your little poker and go around the edge because you want to get all of the air bubbles out because air bubbles is what can possibly cause botulism. And let me tell you, when you get in some of these canning groups, they are ruthless. Yeah. So we have a saying in the South that my kitchen, my rules. So you don't like the way I make something, then you don't have to eat it and you dang sure don't have to buy it because we'll, It'll we'll get eat eight. it ourselves but uh so i'm just going around and getting all the air out plus whenever you um do this it makes a little bit more room and you'll see that they were pretty packed to the very top and you want to leave about one inch you want everything to be about to the bottom rim there that gap in the top of the jar between your food and the top is called head space and different recipes call for different, like your jams and jellies are more of a half, half inch headspace, maybe a centimeter sometimes, depending on what you're jamming or jellying up. But your pickles and salsa, you're supposed to allow for. Yeah, you won't be lacking in headspace. <laughs> supposed to be, it's supposed to allow for an inch. And you don't want to get them too full because the, as it, cooks down it's gonna pressure now we're not pressure cooking these but it still will gain pressure and then seal and you don't want your lid to buckle which will happen if you get it too full and like I said I had one bust on me just probably an hour ago and it sounded like a muffled shotgun going off in my kitchen Stan wasn't here he was at Bible study which normally I'm at with him but I'm just so overwhelmed with pickles and we have to go get our son from work here in a few minutes. So uh, I it set out done. tonight. Yeah, quite frankly, it's been three days of cucumbers and pickles. And so I'm ready to get it done. So I, um, since you're dealing with uh, the apple cider vinegar, it's and the, it has so much sugar in it, you want to definitely dip your rag in, a vin in some vinegar because vinegar cuts the sweet and it will, uh, if you don't do this step, you want to wipe your rims really good. If you don't do this step, then your jars, it's not a guarantee that they won't seal, but there's a good chance of it. So, do that. 
And then you want to, of course, I started with my jars. They're all clean and sterilized. You want to put your lids on. You do not want to muscle them out. So it's not, if your husband or something's doing with you, don't let them put the jar lids on. Because you just want them finger tight. And trust me, his finger tight is not going to be the same as mine. And then that will cause your lids to buckle as well. And look how beautiful those look. If you're a man, you tighten it up and then come back off of it a little bit. Yeah, that would be a, that's actually a good, good idea. So, then you're going to water bathe these and um, you're going to put them, if you're not familiar on how to water bathe, you will have a large pot and you want to put um, a rack in the bottom of it because you don't want your jar sitting on the pan. They will bust as they heat and then all your hard work's just going to be gone and out the window. So you'll um, bring your water, you'll set your jars. Another thing, um, if your jars are hot with brine, you don't want to put them in ice cold water in your in your pan. And works the opposite as well. If your water, if you are using multiple batches and if you've already water bathed one and you pull the jars out, that water is boiling and it's extremely hot. You, and you don't want to put your jars in that have cooled down slightly. So what I do, because I generally do large batches, is I empty my water completely out and then I put cold water in it because the pan is so hot and then it'll make it lukewarm pretty quick. And then you set your jars down in and you want to cover them completely. You'll get seven quarts to a large pan, generally on an average water bath pan. And you will um, cover them with one inch of water at least. And uh, then you bring it, you cover it with a lid and you bring it to a boil. Once it starts to boil, you will uh, let it boil for 10 minutes. Once that timer has went off, you remove your lid and be careful removing your lid. Don't forget to always pull the lid up away from you because steam burns are not any fun. So, um, uh, and then you'll use the little handy tool that we have right here. You'll put it around like this and make sure you squeeze in tight and you'll lift it in, in and out like that. And uh, if you have ceramic countertops or tile or anything like that, make sure you have a towel laid down because that also can either crack your tile or crack your jar as well. And I label my jars before I can. A lot of people don't, but depending on what you're making, like say you're making um, blackberry jelly and uh, blueberry jelly, you don't want to get those confused. So, and sometimes we get to doing so many different things that, you know, we tend to forget. So let me get these labeled really quick for B&B &B for bread and butter. And then after you pull them out of the jars, I tell you my hands are sticky because messing with this brine. Oh, and that brings us to another point. If you have leftover brine, you can put it uh, in a container, sealed container, and uh, leave it. It's good for four or five days in your fridge if you end up, if you think you're going to be doing some more pickling or anything like that. So uh, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, Stan's going to say goodbye. <laughs> Bye, guys. We're going to start doing uh, more of these. He is now officially going to be preaching and helping uh, do our bakery and uh, canning side at home. And we're going to be bringing you some more videos on prepping and stuff like that on things we do. Um, we were a little bit more preppers than what we thought we were. Just based on how we were raised, we kind of thought everybody did the things we did, but we're realizing that we're one of a rare breed. So, uh, anyway, I hope you all have a blessed night, and like and subscribe, and ring the bell, and we will see you next time. Have a good one.